Let's go move on to olive oil. Uh, and we've done lead stories on this in the past, uh, especially after 60 Minutes exposed earlier this year, the fraud that's rampant in the olive oil industry. They had a, a, done a piece that connected it to the Italian mafia uh, and, and uh, essentially si exposing the $16 billion a year of olive oil that's adulterated with a really cheap oxidized omega-6 vegetable oil, which is pernicious to health in a large number of ways. So, uh, but what I really enjoyed about your chapter and your whole story about olive oil, because I have olive trees where I, I live in Florida, and I never knew how to process those olives. But now I know after reading your book, it's, uh, it really is, it's a, it's a fascinating story because as a food lover, you really go into the details that you need to know how to get the healthiest, most optimal food. So maybe share the olive oil, sir, because it is, it's truly fascinating. You know, Italy makes some delicious extra virgin olive oil and they make some very good real extra virgin olive oil. But the problem is um, a lot of what is exported from Italy is not their best product, to say the least. Uh, people associate olive oil with Italy when they've done perception studies of American consumers. The thing that they look for most is that the oil comes from Italy. Um, but coming from Italy is not the same as being made in Italy. Italy is the world's largest exporter of olive oil but they're also the world's largest importer of olive oil. So they buy up oil from all over the Mediterranean basin, from Tunisia, from Syria, from Morocco, from Spain, um, blend it, bottle it. Uh, often it's labeled bottled in Italy, you know, which is technically true. Uh, it was shipped to Italy and put into bottles, but it's not Italian olive oil. So when people buy that, they're relying on, on some sort of myth of Italian quality. Italy doesn't even produce enough uh, extra virgin olive oil for its own to meet its own domestic demand. So while you can get uh, very good olive oil from Italy, uh, it's it's trickier than from some other countries. And you know, I recommend I, I give a number of tips for people to shop for olive oil. But what people need to understand about olive oil is that it's essentially a, a, a closer to fresh squeezed fruit juice than it is to most of the other oils we're familiar with. With um, all of your seed-based oils, soy, peanut, canola oil, um, you have to get oil out of a seed, which is very difficult, and it's done through a chemical or distillation or thermic process, which can also affect the nutrients. Whereas uh, olive oil is very simple. You crush an olive, or more common today, they spin the olive in a centrifuge until the juice is expelled by, by gravity. But in either case, um, to be defined as extra virgin olive oil, it can be nothing but the juice mechanically extracted, which means crushing or spinning an olive. No additives, no heat, no chemicals, no processing whatsoever other than crushing. It's the uh, same way you would make fresh orange juice, uh, except you start with olives. And as a result, Olive oil has a fairly short shelf life compared to other oils because, you know, again, you wouldn't buy a bottle of fresh squeezed orange juice, open it, take a swig and put it in your cabinet and leave it there for two years and expect it to be good. But that's what a lot of people do with olive oil. Uh, but the bigger problem is that it's what a lot of uh, stores do with olive oil. It, olive oil is shipped here by slow boat. It takes a long time to even reach the shelves. It sits there on the shelves sometimes for years. And um, most bottles of olive oil have a use by or sell by date on them, which consumers can't really be blamed for believing means something, but it really does not. There's no law, there's no regulation, and it behooves producers to put on a date that's so far out that that olive oil will never get tossed by the store for being too old. What people need to know is that um, the date that they want to be looking for is the pressed on date or harvest date, which are essentially the same thing because olives go bad almost immediately after being picked. They're always uh, pressed into olive oil basically the same day. Great olive oil is pressed within a couple of hours of picking. Bad olive oil might be picked, uh, ten, crushed 10 hours after it's picked. But the harvest date and the pressed on date are essentially the same. That's what you want to look for. Ideally, it should be less than six months um, old. And the problem is that very few bottles of olive oil actually have that date, certainly none of the big supermarket brands. 
the, one of the solutions that you offered, and uh, this may be surprising to many, but uh, I think 60 Minutes confirmed this too, is that the big box brands like Sam's and Costco's in the United States seem to have a supply chain uh, logistics in place that really uh, confirms and certifies that their source of origin is correct and the purity is fine. It's not adulterated. It, that Was that your uh, result of your evaluations and your investigation? Well, I found um, sort of across the board that the big box stores do a better job with their supply chain of almost all the food. It's true, it was true for seafood as well. People are really hard, um, surprised to hear that, you know, I would, I, I feel more confident buying my seafood or even olive oil at a BJ's or Costco than my local supermarket. But um, I, I think the best way to buy olive oil is at any store that will actually let you taste it, which is tip, typically not a supermarket and not a big box store, but a lot of gourmet stores, specialty retailers, um, they're sort of a chain of olive oil and vinegar shops that are all across the country. Um, in big cities, some of the nicer supermarkets will let you taste the olive oil because that's once you taste good olive oil, you can never go back to the bad stuff. And it's pretty clear when you taste it and smell it that it's fresh, that it's fruity, that it's a, a, a whole different ball game. So that's sort of the best way to buy it. And then another thing is you know, to look at some other countries that you, people don't really associate uh, so much with olive oil, but do a great job. I particularly, I'm a big fan of Australia. Um, Australia, uh, most of the experts I talk to say uh, across the board, the best, uh, most reliable quality. Australia also has separate legal standards from what most of the rest of the world uses for olive oil, which are considerably stricter, the testing and the grading. Um, and uh, I like a lot of the New World olive oils, California, Chile, South Africa, uh, basically any place where grapes grow well for wine, um, olives grow well uh, in addition. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it, there's great, like I said, there's great olive oil coming from Italy, but not all olive oil comes from Italy. Uh, Spain is the largest producer of olive oil in the world, but very few American consumers think about going out and trying to buy Spanish olive oil. Yes, and so there's well, let's get a perspective on the the fraud that's pervasive out there. And and as we mentioned earlier, the reason it's so significant and absurd is not necessarily just for the taste. That's actually relatively minor, but for the health aspects, because if it's adulterated, it's usually with uh, I believe sunflower oil because it's uh, the texture or the viscosity is pretty similar, and usually, uh, of course, it's uh, going to be uh, well, it may be grown in conventional, typically is grown in conventional agriculture, so it's going to be loaded with pesticides and herbicides, and it'll be, more importantly, be oxidized, and, and it's just loaded with omega-6, so instead of getting the omega-9 that olive oil is known to be, oleic acid, is a beneficial fatty acid, you're getting omega-6, which is actually causes health problems in excess, uh, especially if it's oxidized. So, what would your estimate be of the prevalence of the fraud? As I said earlier, 60 Minutes estimated it to be 80%, but in your book, you said it's far more, and it was well in excess of 90% of the of the oils sold in the, well, let's, let's address from two points. The oils that you're buying in your regular grocery store, not the, the stores that you just mentioned, uh, and then the restaurants, which is another issue, because it's been my experience, you never order olive oil. If you're eating a salad, you never put olive oil on it. Uh, so if you could respond to that, that would be great. Sure. Well, I mean, there have been a lot of different studies done and a lot of different, because uh, I guess what a lot of consumers don't even understand what extra virgin olive oil is. So I'm going to explain that quickly so I can talk about some of these studies. So. Uh, when olive oil is made, and as I mentioned, it's just, you know, you crush an olive, you get that juice. It is then graded, and it's graded in two ways. It's graded through um, uh, laboratory testing. There's certain benchmarks for it to be called extra virgin. It has to have uh, a certain number for free fatty acids, and there's a lot of standards. So they test it in a lab, and it's got to meet all these uh, minimums for it to be grayed out as extra virgin. Then there's also sensory testing, which is uh, very unique in the food world. There's not many foods that have to be actually tasted by experts before they can be labeled, but uh, olive oil is one of those. So there's, I, I think it's 16 uh, specific defects that they list, and these are things like musty um, and 
an expert panel tasty olive oil, and if it has any one of those defects, it cannot be graded extra virgin. Extra virgin is supposed to essentially be perfect. So I, I kind of compare it to, to gasoline. When you go to the gas pump, there's regular gas, there's premium, and there's ultra premium. Extra virgin is supposed to be the the highest grade ultra premium olive oil. Then below that is just regular virgin. Below that, any olive oil that does not fall into those two top grades, extra virgin and virgin, is deemed unfit for human consumption without further processing. That processing is then to essentially distill or refine that oil to get rid of the impurities, which um, a lot of people also believe gets rid of a lot of the health benefits of olive oil. So the single biggest adulterant in, in, in fake extra virgin olive oil is not sunflower oil, though you will find that, and peanut oil. It's actually refined olive oil, which, so, which is much harder to detect because it's, a, it's the same, same from the same source, but it's not virgin olive oil by any means. Um, uh, so, and then, so when they do these tests to see how much of our olive oil is adulterated, they typically buy olive oil in the store and 60 minutes, um, they only did one of the tests. I forget which one. They either did the sensory test or the laboratory test, but they did not do both. Uh, and some of the studies do one, some do both. The, the biggest uh, source of data is the University of California Davis Olive Center, which has done repeated tests of both supermarket oil and um, food service oil in restaurants. And they've typically found uh, somewhere around two thirds of the oil to be fake, to not meet the standard of real extra virgin. It's varied in their tests, but usually in the 60 something percent range. And then when they tested the five leading brands of supermarket olive oil in the country, they did worse. The worst performer was 94% of the time. But um, it has been getting better in recent years. Their tests are a little bit old. Uh, the olive, some of the olive oil industry accuses them of skewing uh, bias towards California oils. But I've been following this, and there have been numerous tests done just in the last year in other countries, in Germany, in France. Uh, and Typically, the results are anywhere from about 45 to 65% fake. So I think it's fair to say that, you know, at least half of the olive oil um, on our shelves is problematic. Okay. And most likely more, especially if it's inexpensive. And are, are there, can you use price like you do in seafood as a barometer for the likelihood of it not being adulterated? Not so much as in seafood because there are some good oils that are inexpensive and, and even at the opposite end, there's a lot of expensive oils that are not good. Um, so, um, you know, lately, uh, say oil, olive oil from Tunisia has been getting a lot of praise, um, but because there's not a lot of demand for it, Tunisian olive oils are pretty inexpensive. And you can buy a bottle of extra virgin olive oil that's of good quality that I'd be happy to consume for under $10, you can buy a bottle for $35 that I totally would not want to use. Um, but I would say on average, you know, a good bottle of olive oil is going to cost you the, between $15 and $20 is probably, you know, sort of the market average. And um, how big it's, is that, it's how again big is something that... Quarter, a quarter, a liter for a bottle? Uh, yeah, that would be a, a, either a 750 milliliter, like a wine bottle or a, or a quart, depending, you know, okay. where it's packaged. Okay. Um, and, you know, the average American um, only consumes one bottle of olive oil a year. So it's one of those things. I consume a lot more. I consume about a bottle a month personally, which would put me on par with the Italians. Uh, the Greeks consume a bottle every two weeks. <laughs> they lead the world. But, um, but you know, it's, it's one of the things for the amount that Americans use, you can afford to splurge and get really good oil and wine. You know, if you were going to drink one bottle of wine a year, you would not hesitate to pay $25 for a good bottle of wine. Sure. Yeah, that uh, makes a lot of good sense. So do you have any uh, recommendations or cautions or precautions or tips when you're in a restaurant to identify if, in fact, it's safe? to use their olive oil on your, on your salad dressing. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's going to be olive oil used in the food almost certainly, especially if you're eat, eating any kind of, uh, you know, Mediterranean cuisine, Italian, Greek, Spanish, French, they're, they're going to use the olive oil in the cooking. There's not too much you can do about it. Um, my biggest recommendation would just not to, not to ever use the stuff that they give you to dip bread in. 
Um, you know, that's probably the lowest common denominator when they give you a bowl of, of green stuff and some rolls, way to fill you up cheaply with cheap food. Um, for the salad dressing, it's trickier because a lot of times the oil is not in the bottle it came in. They've put it into, you know, a little cruet, a little glass bottle set with the vinegar for you to mix. So you can't really see the label or anything. Sometimes you can. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you want to have, um, an oil and vinegar dressing, as opposed to, you know, dressing that's probably even less healthy, which, you know, blue cheese or ranch or something, you know, moderation. If you have a little bit of olive oil on your salad once in a while, it's not going to be a big deal. It's like you mentioned with, uh, with tuna, it's different if you have it once in a while than if you do it every day, then you have to be more careful.